Hello everyone, so today we are going to study transmural pressures. This is one topic that many students get confused about. And why transmural pressure being positive is taken as inflating press pressure and why intrapleural pressure being negative is taken as inflating pressure. So, this confusion needs to be resolved. Now, what is Mura? Mura is a Latin word for wall. So, any pressure between the walls is transmural pressure especially for a cylinder or a sphere if we draw mura in brown so the inner pressure being p1 and the outer pressure being p2 now if p1 is in negative it would pull on the walls if it is positive it would expand while the outer pressure if negative would pull the ball to open and vice versa right so this difference between the inner pressure and the outer pressure dictates whether the wall or the cylinder would collapse or expand right so inner pressure p1 minus p2 would dictate what the dominant force would be if the net pressure is positive it is taken as inflating pressure and its direction is from inside to outside right and if it is negative in nature then the net force being exerted on the sphere between the two pressures is from outside to inside and it would lead to collapse. So let's see what happens in the lungs. As for the lungs or the alveoli, transpulmonary pressure is the transmural pressure for alveoli, right? So if we draw a lung and pleural cavity around it, we know that the two pressures dictating alveolar collapse or expansion are alveolar pressure and the intrapleural pressure. The intrapleural pressure from minus 5 to minus 8 during the respiratory cycle, we have covered it in the previous topic and the alveolar pressure from minus 1 to plus 1 through the lung mechanics, right? So this pressure difference between the alveolar and the intrapleural is the transpulmonary pressure and this dictates whether the alveolus is about to collapse or expand. So net pressure at end expiratory phase is plus 5, right? So when it is plus, it means it is inflating pressure and it would tend to move from inside to outside, right? Against the elastic recoil of the lungs. So, what happens if I were to somehow make intrapleural pressure positive? Let's say there is a trauma and penetrating injury of the chest. So, the flow would generate from atmospheric 0 to intrapleural minus 5 until the intrapleural pressure is equal to atmosphere which is zero. In this case, the transpulmonary pressure would become zero minus brackets plus one. So, this would become a negative value, right? And what did we say about the negative value? That it moves from outside to inside and it that is the reason why in pneumothorax, when the intrapleural pressure becomes zero, the transpulmonary pressure shifts the lung from outside to inside meaning the collapse of the lungs right so let's draw an alveolus again with its inner pressure being p1 and outer being p2 and the net difference between the two pressures being transpulmonary pressure so when it is positive of course it would inflate so how can we make it positive we could either increase p1 or we could either decrease p2 right so how to increase p1 when for example in a ventilated case patient is on neuromuscular blocker right so what does the ventilator do instead of changing p2 it would increase p1 as a result of which the positive value inside the alveoli would increase and that is how the ventilator breath takes place the alveoli would of course then expand But what about spontaneously breathing patient? We said last time that diaphragm is the key muscle when it moves downwards, the intrapleural cavity expands, right? So when the pleural cavity expands in volume as per Boyle's law, the pressure decreases. So that's how P2 would become even more negative and the net transpulmonary pressure would be in positive values. And that's how spontaneous breath is taken. So let's just see what happens at transthoracic level or around the chest wall. Now chest wall is also a wall, right? So the transmural pressure around it 
is composed of inner intracrural pressure being P1 and the outer atmospheric pressure. And the difference between these two pressures could dictate whether the chest moves inside or the chest moves outside. So the transthoracic pressure between intracrural and, and atmosphere is minus 5 minus 0. So it's a negative value. Now when we talk about negative value, so the net force would move from outside to inside, right? Now remember that the elastic recoil of the chest tends to move the chest outwards and the transthoracic pressure, it tends to move the chest inwards and this is how a fine balance is maintained between outward and inward forces of the chest wall. What if pneumothorax happens, right? And there is a puncture and since atmosphere pressure is higher than the intracrural pressure, so air flows into the pleural cavity from outside until the intracrural pressure becomes zero. In that case, the transmural pressure from and would become positive. So a positive value would mean from inside to outside. So the net force would move the chest wall from inside to outside. So that is the reason why the chest expands when pneumothorax happens. So this is the basic concept of transmural pressures and how they operate at the level of alveoli and chest wall. If there is any confusion, you can write a comment below and I will answer. Thank you.